Our next guest has been a huge investor in artificial intelligence and in human-assisted intelligence, and he believes space is going to grow exponentially in the coming decade. Joining us right now, Jim Breyer. He's the founder and CEO of the venture capital firm Breyer Capital, and we welcome him to the show. Thank you for being here. Andrew, always a pleasure. When did you decide? I remember, because I can't remember exactly when, though. A couple of years ago where you just said, I'm going all in on AI. That I'm, going to spend the, I'm going to spend the next year or two or three just enmeshing myself into this world. It was exactly two years ago. Two years ago. At Davos. And since that time, I've met with, I would say, over a thousand phenomenal doctors, uh, hospital systems, medical school deans, university leaders, with a particular focus around using AI very specifically around computational pathology, cancer, trying to integrate data, and then running machine learning algorithms against that data to help patients and help doctors and nurses. Okay, so give us some hope. What's the coolest thing going right now that you think is the closest to reality? The one I'm working on right now uh, to be uh, announced over the next week or two, I hope, is in the area of using medical images, digitizing them, mm -hmm. something the Chinese, by the way, are far behind us on, and running machine learning capability against that to help doctors do a much better prognosis, whether it's radiology, breast cancer, anything where there is imaging that is analyzable that can help doctors provide better care. You just mentioned the Chinese. There is a race going on right now between the U.S. and China over AI, uh, with some speculating that China may be actually moving ahead of us. Is that right? It's neck and neck. And I just came from a meeting with some very senior Chinese AI researchers. Uh, last night, several meetings with some of the best of the best from the U.S., Google, Facebook, Amazon. Uh, it's neck and neck. Can you help us understand Simple this? Simple as that. People say, talk about AI, and, and, and they sort of use this very general term, and then, they, and then they say Google's doing it, and Facebook's doing it, and Amazon's doing it, and Microsoft is doing it. Sometimes Apple's in that conversation, sometimes not. How... What's the distinction between the approach that they're all taking? And then, of course, when it talks about China, Alibaba and Tencent and everybody else. Well, AI, uh, again, there's narrow-based, which would be very specific. It might be around voice input, echo, et cetera. That, to me, is less interesting as a venture investor at this point. Uh, but what is really interesting is when not only is it a simple voice recognition kind of capability, but it's image analysis, and we can affect industries, vertical industries like healthcare. But for sure, the FANG stocks and the BAT stocks are not yet being appreciated enough for their core artificial intelligence Wait a that means, the that means capabilities. Wait have been on fire. They've been on fire. They've continued to soar this year. You're saying it's, it's not enough no matter what? I invested in Facebook at five cents a share in 2005. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what's happening is they are undervalued only when one looks at their capability and talent in the worlds of artificial intelligence. One analogy I would make, Tom Brady, Mm -hmm. I'll pass this along to Jim Cramer. I know he's an Eagles fan. Was drafted 199th. I know, the Fang companies know, and the Bat companies know, who are the top 200 AI technologists in the world? And my job as a venture capitalist is to help recruit that top 10 or 20 to the best private companies that I'm involved with. And it's a lot easier to figure out the top 200 than um, a Tom Brady who went 199th. Wow. Final question before we leave you. Um, I interviewed Mark Benioff yesterday, both on a panel and later uh, on CNBC, and he talked about regulations coming to Silicon Valley. Specifically, he equated Facebook with cigarettes and nicotine, meaning that it's an addictive business and also that there are other addictive businesses in the Valley that need to be fixed, changed by Washington. What do you make of that? He's just flat out wrong. And Mark's a great friend and we've invested together. Uh, regulation should be appropriately applied, but the comparison, I don't believe, holds any weight. But the responsibility when it comes to, and we, we talked about Apple recently, is it, is it parents or, or, or us that need to be responsible, or does the tech, do the technology companies themselves have to have a, a different level of responsibility than they've taken thus far, whether it be the addiction to the devices or the software or the social uh, uh, networks themselves or, or other parts of the business. Andrew, we can all get much better. The technology leaders, the venture capitalists, the board members, we should be taking a 
much more significant leadership role. Hey there, thanks for checking out CNBC on YouTube. Be sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all of the day's biggest stories. You can also click on any of the videos around me to watch the latest from CNBC. Thanks for watching.